a little bit of a shadow there. Uh, this is right from Better Tat today. We're going to give you some stuff to think about. And today we're talking about ethics. All right. Okay, now that that's over with, ethics, everyone's favorite subject, yay. I love philosophy, so, you know, I can't, I'm pretty biased for this stuff, but <laughs> ethics, what is ethics? It's just how we define what's right and wrong, right? And this can change depending on where you live, you know, what, what civilization or part of the world or even part of town that you live in, your ethics can be completely different, right? Some people may think that it's right to rob and steal and cheat and do all this other stuff, while other people may think it's wrong. Right? In some societies, it's thought that, you know, you should take a baby if they're weak and leave it out in the cold like the Spartans used to do if it didn't, uh, if it cried too much, right? We don't think that's the same now. It's different ethics, right? What we think is right and wrong. So in tattooing, how do we define what's right and what's wrong and our ethical responsibilities as a tattoo artist or a client, which we'll work on artists today and clients later, what to do, you know, when you're in a situation of operating a tattoo business? if you are a tattooer, you're most likely 1099, you own a business. So I've spent years thinking about this and it's, it's, it's a constantly evolving thing because our, our industry is always in flux, right? It's a social media world where things are always changing. But as we start to break down things to just the bare core, right? We have to think about the individual and their application as a tattooer. What do we think is right? So the main thing that I came up with is this is my foundational right treat people with respect now i'll put this as a one there why do i think that it's right to treat people with respect well because i naturally think it's wrong if you don't <laughs> i know that doesn't explain anything let's erase this i'll get rid of the wrongs today maybe we can do another one where we do the wrongs um it's, it's necessary aspect of our life and our civilization where we have to treat people with respect, right? Um, and that, this goes everywhere, right? You have to understand that there is a person in front of you that they have their own pains, their own life, their own thoughts, their own ideas, their own experiences, and you can never know that, right? They can try to explain it to you with the use of language, but you'll never know what it feels, right? That, that human condition to be that person. So with that, we want to try to treat people with respect, right? And this is like the basis of this stuff, right? Like that's as far down as I can get. If somebody walks into your shop and you don't like their idea, you don't like their face, you don't like their clothes, you don't like the, how they walk, you still need to treat them with respect. That's the easiest way to make sure that you're on the right side of boards on this, right? Um, I end up kind of dog tracking this one here. Let's do number two. So I'm thinking about the operation inside of tattooing. I'm always trying to think about like that basis, how far down into this ethical application can we get to try and define what's right and what's wrong, right? Um, number two is do your best, right? If you could do better, but you didn't, you're denying the person who is interacting with you that you're marking permanently for the rest of their life, the ability to experience the full potential of the work that they're getting done. If you could have done better. Now I know as an artist, we're always gonna be conflicted, right? Because if we would have maybe drawn it one more time, or maybe we would have been able to do this a little bit better. Maybe we wouldn't be so, so pushed for time, or if I would have gotten more sleep, you could have done better. Yeah, that's the job. I bet you every surgeon feels the same way. Maybe even every tax accountant. I don't know. But if you still think that you have done your best, that was the best that you could have done at that given moment with what was going on in your life, that's enough. It's not 110% because that's not real. Just do your best. If your best is 80%, you did your best. Make sure that when you define what your best is, that your client knows what that is, <laughs> right? <laughs> Which will bring us down to our third one here. Uh, uh, communicate your position. <sighs> Communication is key, right? If you're a tattooer, you have to be able to sit down with somebody and define exactly what it is that you want to do. Now, communication isn't just verbal, right? Be visual. There can be touch-sensitive things that are going to be going on. Communication comes through everything. If I sit there 
and do that, I mean, your brain's gonna come up with something like that dude's high on drugs, or maybe he's pretending to be an octopus, or maybe he just likes to do that. I don't know, right? But communication can come across many ways. It's not just what we say. So even if you're totally into a design, you feel like you're treating someone with respect, you're trying to do your best, but maybe your body posture and position, you know, is not actually communicating where you are effectively, make sure you let your client know. If you're having a bad day, but you still think that you can do your best, and you feel like you're treating the person with respect, let them know that you're having a bad day. Keep the lines of communication open and ensure that the person who's sitting across from you knows what they're getting into. Because if you're a tattoo artist, you have control over this person's future, right? If you do a good tattoo and you are a dick, they will look at that tattoo every day until they either get it covered up, lasered, or they get too old to give a shit. They probably won't because it's going to last forever. <laughs> and they're going to look at that space where you would mark them and they're going to be like, this is a good, bad, okay tattoo, whatever. But that guy's a dick. And they have to think that for the rest of their life. If you haven't done your best to treat them with respect, you know, communicate things effectively, you are really, really, really dropping the ball on how you should be doing your job, in my opinion. All right. Number four. Always strive to improve. This is gonna be hard for some people, and I think that this is one of the ones I have the biggest issue with nowadays with tattooing, is that when you fall into the position of being an artist and the job is so demanding, you try to compartmentalize your experience as much as possible to save time, to save stress, and to save, you know, just give, having a heart attack at 38, like me. Um, but trying not to improve by settling into a style or things that you're comfortable with and not actually critiquing your work so you can grow is doing a disservice to your clientele as well. You should always be getting better. And if there ever comes a point where you're not getting better in some way, you need to figure out why that's happening and you need to address what you're doing. If you're 76 years old, you can't see and you're still tattooing, your back's nearly broken, you know, and you only do it just because it's your job, it doesn't mean that you should be tattooing. Maybe you should do something else, right? Same thing, if I, I have glaucoma, I am going to go blind. At a point in time when I cannot see effectively and I do not trust my ability to be able to improve, this is before even I think I start to lose my eyesight, I am going to quit tattooing. That's just what's going to happen. There's nothing I can do about it, it's out of my control, but I have to constantly improve for my clients. I want every tattoo that I do to be better than the one that I did before, and if I can't achieve that because of something else that's going on, I'm not able to do my best, right? <clears throat> memory card got full there so I had to take a stop for a second sorry um yeah so when, I, when i'm breaking these things down i i want to make sure that you know i'm not trying to bounce back to the most simple things right that are that are outside of you as an individual like the, the ethical application that we have to worry about here is wholly focused on you as the individual right and what you think is right not to let society put pressures on you or to have something else happen externally that's gonna force you to change what's going on, right? Like Nazi Germany, people had an ethical responsibility to treat people with respect and to do their best, right? To communicate with their positions with the people in charge and to like always strive to improve as a society and they didn't do that. Millions of people died, you know, as a result of it. And our world is forever changed by that bullshit. And if people would have been thinking inside of themselves just these simple things, things could have been better. You know what I mean? Um, and not to get too far out there, we're going to talk about historical ethical applications and whatnot, but we're in it back in, right? Um, it's just to tell you like how, how pertinent that these things are regardless of your trade, right? Um, we're always wanting to improve things and we always have to try to define exactly what's possible inside of ourselves and what we think is important, right? We're not trying to just like delay or deny things as an individual. We're not trying to say, well, I can do tattooing in Washington state, which has zero regulations, um, because I want to. Like legally it may be allowed, but are you doing what's best for the client who's gonna be paying you money? No, you know, and this can go everywhere. Like, should you have an apprenticeship or should you not? You know, all of these things need to be pulled down and boiled, just kind of, you know, funneled into a little mess of what's gonna be right for the other person. 
I know this is going to be super difficult because tattooers are naturally egocentric assholes. <laughs> we don't agree on anything, right? This is for another. That's it. If you lived in the woods by yourself, the ethics of interaction between you and another person don't need to apply. I mean, if you wanted to think globally and like what your impact on the planet is going to be, I don't even think you have to think that hard, right? Your actions can only have such a great consequence insofar as that they can only extend so far out from yourself. But when we live in society, we have to think about what we're doing with our ethics, right? You're not in this neutral, sterile space. Everything is going to rely on us for someone else. Now, when we get into very small groups, maybe it's two people living in the woods alone, right? One person has a gun, the other person doesn't. We can think about that responsibility to each other, right? How does it work? See what I'm getting at? Even though we live in a society that's filled with tons of people and there's so much stuff going on, when you get into doing a tattoo, it's you and another person. That is it. It is the most fundamentally broken down application of ethical responsibilities between each other that you can get, right? This is even removed from being like a surgeon or a psychiatrist or anything else because you don't have malpractice insurance, right? These people have to implicitly trust you when you are giving them their work. And if they don't know what they're getting into, I believe that you're failing them. Other people will deny my thoughts, which is fine because this is my ethical framework, not yours, so suck it. Um, but I also focus more on the ethics of care. And I guess that I'd be focused on, you know, Kantian ethics, you know, who's, I, I need to make sure that I'm my best so that, you know, everyone else is, no, nah, I don't, I don't care. If you're an artist and you think that we should all be artists and it's going to benefit this because it's pushing the industry, I don't agree with that. You know, we can't rely on the product manufacturers, the people who are selling us stuff to be on the same side as us because they're there for money, because this is corporation lifestyle, right? Break it down as small as you can get, right? We're not trying to think about the many, we're trying to think about the few realistically. And the few is going to be you and another person. And how you treat that other person can really make or break the actual tattoo experience. Like I said before, even if you do the best tattoo on the planet, if you're a complete asshole to that person, it's not a good tattoo because the experience wasn't there. And at the same time, even if you're the nicest person on the planet and they get a really bad tattoo, you didn't do your job. There has to be a balance there, right? Always let people know where you are before you work on them. That's it. Hopefully that was fun. Yay, ethics class. We'll get more into this later, but you have any other ideas that we should apply? Let me know in the comments. Throw something down there. This is our basic four rules, and I'd love to get it to 10, because wouldn't that be funny? <laughs> this is Ryan from bettertattooing.com signing off.